You're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com. Today I'm going to show you how I've created my bird journal page using Lindy Stamp Gang products, some gorgeous papers from Basic Grey and a host of other goodies. Now the first thing I've done is I've taped the edges of my page. So what this is going to do is give me a nice white border for my uh, journal page. Just going to spritz the paper with some water because the first step in this page is to create a watercolour background and I'm going to do that with the flat Fabios from Lindy's Stamp Gang. Now whilst these aren't watercolours, if you add water to the page like this and then the Fabios over the top, they sure look like they are. Then you just need to take a brush and spread the water around so that it's not in little droplets. You just want a nice damp paper for this. I have some South Shore Sand Flat Fabio. And I'm just going to spray this on as a bit of a base. Now because the water's there first it will turn out as a paler colour than it would normally. Now the other thing I'm going to be careful of here is not to get too much water in this centre part because it leaks through to the other pages. Now the next colour I've got is Ocean Breeze Blue. I'm just going to sort of uh, dip my paintbrush in and add it that way. And you can see that because I've got the water on there, those colours are mixing. Now it's really important if you put a colour on one side to put it on the other as well, so that there's a bit of continuity across the piece. Okay, so that's Ocean Breeze Blue. Now the last colour I've got here is T-Bird Turquoise. Again, just dipping it straight into the bottle there. And then just sort of splotting it around. Some of this will probably have seeped under the edges of my tape. That doesn't matter at all. In fact, I kind of like it when that happens. It creates a really interesting look um, because it'll be a little bit darker. In adding that water as the first step, not only does it give you a really pretty soft background, it also allows colours to blend that might not necessarily have gone together like those browns and the blues. Now for a quick blast with the heat gun just to start the drying off. Now I have not dried it completely on purpose so that you don't get watermarks like I just have here. If you do and you don't want them just add a little water back in over the top. Make sure it's clean water. <laughs> Wash the paintbrush first. And just sort of spread that out a bit and that gets rid of the watermark. Now, leave this to air dry. I've decided I'm going to challenge myself a little bit this time. I hope you're not disappointed. So I've been using this amazing, gorgeous range of paper from Basic Grey. And it is the Cart Postal set. So I decided that I'd try something that I've wanted to do for a while and use scrapbook papers as the basis for a journal page. And of course, Lindy's Stamp Gang had some colours that went perfectly with this. So basically what I've done is, I've, you saw me colour the background. I've then spent some time just sort of tearing little strips um, of the papers. Now most of them I've hand torn, but some of them I've cut with the die cut. And I'm just going to do some funky little things. So this one's one of the double-sided papers. I've cut it out with my die. And then I've just trimmed the edge so I can flip it over so you get two coordinating pieces, which I thought was kind of neat. And I'm just going to make a bird kind of themed page. So even now you can see that I've got this beautiful sweep of paper going across my journal page with the little bird and not a lot going on underneath here so it's really focusing the attention and then down in this bottom corner I've got kind of a lot going on down here with another little bird but it's going to be all of the extra things I add that will make this page a bit more interesting for you all. I've dragged out a few of my journaling stamps and what I mean by journaling stamps is um, they're a bit bigger than you would use normally on a card. They're also wonderful scrapbooking stamps. So I have a couple from Dina Wakeley. And I've also got this packet of basic grey uh, clear stamps, which I'm going to use on here as well. Now I've got these two ink pads. I'm going to use the Ranger Archival Ink in Pale Ochre 
an Adirondack in aqua. I'm just going to be doing some background effects with that. It won't be anything super fancy. I'm actually using my collage elements as kind of a placement guide. I know where they're going to go, so that allows me to add the stamps to sort of enlarge the collage area a bit, but the stamps are more in the background. Um, it just helps build up a little bit of interest in the background so that the collage looks like it belongs as part of the page and isn't just kind of sitting there all by itself. So this is one of the, the basic grey papers and it was a beautiful brown on the back but it's not quite the colour I'm aiming for down in that corner. So I've just got the Lindy's Stamp Gang T-Bird Turquoise. I'm just going to do a little finger painting here. I'm going to use my Tim Holtz Edge Distressor to scruff up the edges of those paper elements a little bit. All of these elements are cut from the basic grey papers. I've just sort of trimmed whatever I needed from each particular paper sheet. I'm giving the elements a little scrunch in my hands to give them a bit of texture. I'm adding the frayed burlap distress ink to the edges of each of the pieces I've cut out just so that they all have something in common and look a little bit old and rattier. As you can see I like to spread the colour around with my fingers, nothing wrong with that. Don't forget to put these aside to dry. I then add the same frayed burlap distress ink to all the edges of all of my collage elements. This will help make them look like part of one unified piece rather than lots of separate bits. Now it's time to start putting the collage piece together. So the first thing I do is lay out my collaged pieces so I know where they need to go. And then what I'm doing is using the little tiny glue dots to put the pieces together. Um, and I'm going to stick this down now with some of the roller glue. Now this is actually um, little dots as well, but it's in a little glue roller. Now, I don't know if you can see the shiny bits there. It's just rolled out all these neat little glue dots. And then down goes that whole section. So just like the first collage, I'll use the little mini glue dots to compose my piece. And then I'll use the larger glue dots to actually adhere it to the, uh, the page behind. And it's so quick. While you weren't looking, I've done a few things. I've glued down my bird collage in the top here using the glue dots. And then I've applied a layer of something called matte medium. It's an artist's medium which is going to allow me to add additional colours and products over the top of what I've already done without muddying the colours. It also means I can draw with pencil and add some magicals to the top of those little birds. Please excuse me, I'm attempting to work with my inquisitive little cat on my desk. Okay, so the matte medium is now dry, which means that I can draw over the top of it with pencils. I'll do a separate clip on colouring the birds, so I'll just give you the highlights, but you might be here for another 20 minutes. I've coloured in areas of the birds with Prismacolor pencils, really emphasising some of the feathers and the plumage. Now what I'm doing is adding magicals from Lindy's Stamp Gang over select areas. I'm using Afternoon Delight Denim and Bachelor Button Blue. To get those beautiful graduations of colour, I'm also using a clean, wet brush just to drag some of the colour around. Now once I've got the base colour down, I'm going over with the Afternoon Delight Denim, which is very strong. And then again, going back in with that clean, wet brush to blend those colours into each other. And that's all that was required. That makes a beautiful bird that looks much more like it's at home in your art journal and not just a stuck-on piece of collage. Now I don't do a lot of drippy pages, but it just sort of seemed right to go on here. So I'm adding some of the T-Bird Turquoise Flat Fabio, and I'm just taking the little pump sprayer out of the bottle and applying the colour drips with a little eyedropper or pipette. Now all I'm doing is I've got my book on an angle here, and I'm just applying it directly underneath my collaged area and letting it run down the page. If it sort of escapes or goes into a place I don't want it to, I'm just moving it around with the eyedropper and also using a piece of paper towel to blot it off. At the end, so that it doesn't end up too overwhelming, I'm also blotting some of the larger pools with a paper towel so I get a more soft, subtle colour. 
Next, I'm using Buccaneer Bay Blue Moonshadow Mist to add some artistic spots to the background of the page. It was just looking a little bit bare, and these are kind of fun. So again, I've taken the spray nozzle out of the bottom, and I've got a really grungy, ratty old brush that I'm using with quite a small sort of lot of bristles. I'm dipping this into the Moonshadow Mist after I've given it a good shake, and I'm just tapping it with my finger to apply splots. The closer you get, the bigger the splots. On some of the spots, I'm dabbing off the colour with a paper towel. That way you get multiple tones, but then they all match. Now I'm going to add a few of the little stamps from the Basic Grace set. I'm using the Coffee Colour uh, Ranger Archival Ink. Adding some stamped elements can make the background look a little bit more interesting. But what do you do when the ink is a bit too dark? Well, you grab a paper towel and you blot the ink just after stamping. This sort of makes it look a little bit more muted and you'll find that the stamped images don't stand out quite so much so that they actually look like part of the background rather than something leaping out at you. Without the matte medium I would not have been able to blot that ink. At this point I'm close to finished. I just have a little shading around my elements left to go to make them really stand out and look defined so that the little birds don't look like part of the background. It's a really simple technique, but you'll be surprised at how much of a difference it really makes. This is where I am so far, and I'm just, is it terrible to really be in love with this? I just, the shimmer, the color, the frame, I just, oh. <laughs> Sorry, I don't often do all my own stuff, but that, I'm, I'm really loving that little bird. I really am. <laughs> to make sure that those beautiful little birds stand out from the background, I'm going to add some shadows. To do this, I'm going to add um, some graphite pencil and some uh, pastel pencil. So the pastel pencil is a Conti and it's the colour sepia and the graphite pencil is a Koenor and it's a, I think it's an, a 2B, it is, it's a 2B. First I'm going to add the brown pastel pencil to what will be the underneath side of the little branches. I'm not trying to make it look like a real branch, just add some dimension. Now that the colour is laid down, I'm using a blending stump to uh, achieve sort of a blend or grade of that colour. So what you do is you make little circles with the blending stump. I like to go all the way along where you've laid down the chalk and then go back and do a second layer a little bit above it. Every subsequent layer will be a little bit lighter. Now you can keep blending until there's no uh, colour left on the blending stump. I choose to stop a bit before that usually. Um, but you can see it gives a beautiful array of tones or shades um, all from that one colour and makes things look a little bit more 3D. Now this is the same technique I'm going to use with the graphite so I'll fast forward through it so you can just get a look. And I'm just going to follow the same process with the graphite. So first you outline the areas that you'd like to add shading to. So this will be underneath the tree branches and underneath the bird. Um, and I'm doing this in a different colour so it's distinguishable from the roundness of the branch as opposed to the shadow. And use that same principle. So basically you just push it into the underneath of the little bird with the blending stump and then blend it out. And you can blend out as much or as little as you like. It's really up to you. I like to keep blending until there are no more hard lines visible. Um, the size or width of the shadow is up to you. And don't forget, if you do something that you don't like, it's only graphite, it's just pencil. You can rub it out and either start again or just use whatever graphite is left on the blending stump. And this is my finished page. You can see I have the papers from Basic Grey. I've used them to create additional elements that I've got around the page and basically the only thing on here that I've added that wasn't from Basic Grey or Lindy's Stamp Gang or the glue dots were the little birds and the art mediums I've used to be able to colour those. Um, whilst there's a lot of elements and a lot going on it's not too close together so it sort of allows enough space for your eye to rest while it's looking at things. So there's lots of empty space 
so that these sort of more cluttered areas don't become too overwhelming. If you've seen any of my cards, you'll know that sometimes they're quite a bit busier. But for this page and for what I wanted, all of this sort of empty space is working really well. You can see I've got the darker spots of moon shadow I missed and that's the areas that I've just flicked on and allowed to dry. Then I've got these paler turquoisey sort of spots. With those areas, they're the ones that I splattered on, left for a few seconds and then patted off with a paper towel. Between the matte medium, which gives it a little bit of texture, the magicals, which give it this beautiful colour, I actually like my bird more than the original. <laughs> and considering that I've seen these little guys in person, this is actually a little bit more true to life. They've got real sparkle. Close enough for you to see that sparkle. Can you see that there? Oh, there it is. There's the sparkle from the Lindy Stamp Gang Magicals. Isn't that yummy? He just glows. Now you can see all the individual elements here. The basic grey papers that I've cut out and used as uh, decorations. The double sided papers that I've added over here. And these beautiful yummy pieces that all work so gorgeously together. You can see the stamping in the background there just accentuating it all. And again here it just looks like it's part of the design and here where I've sort of wrinkled up those um, well I suppose they're supposed to look like ticket stubs there where I've wrinkled them all up you can see that just adds another sort of bit more depth and dimension to the whole thing it, it looks a bit more realistic now again that little bird I don't know if you can see the additional details I've got there so I've drawn little feathers in white there you go, you can see that there, just to make it look a little bit less like a, a printed bird, I suppose. And of course you've got this wonderful bit of paper down the bottom, and that edge that I've achieved from the torn masking tape. And then of course I've stamped all of those odd little letters um, as a phrase, follow your own true north. So, this is something a bit different for me. I hope you haven't been disappointed in how I've chosen to use these basic grey papers. Um, and I hope that you have picked up a few techniques, even if you don't want to do this particular style of page. I still hope that you've learnt something uh, that you can take and use on your own projects. So, thank you for listening and watching, and I'll be back with more soon. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.